Now, there's a silly image out there that I want to veer you against. A lot of people nowadays, when they think of reading books, when they think of being a better rat person, when they think of reading the greatest classics, there's always an emphasis on efficiency. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but any person that you point out there or any entrepreneur people that you see out there, there's a hidden there's a hidden need for you to read more and more and more in this informational age. And now there are apps out there for you to read a book in 15 minutes that would otherwise take three hours for you to finish. And there are all these spark notes and all these summaries and all these all these things out there that's trying to grab your attention. That's trying to give you the, the sweetest synopsis of the story to get the gist of the story for you. And a lot of YouTube videos, they don't get me wrong, these YouTube videos are awesome. They do a brilliant job at bringing out the key points from a novel, from a philosophical work. But in the process of doing so, as we're trying to, as we're trying to condense the amount of time for information inge- ingestion, what we've lost perhaps is just the pleasure of slowing down. The pleasure of slowing down. And there's just the silly image out there of if you read the most amount of books, then you are the most educated. Then you are the most enlightened human being. Then you are the most revered out of a bunch. Then you can recite facts from Bacon, from Newton, from uh, from the mathematics of Gottfried Leibniz. You can recite all these facts and then have these concepts bouncing around in your head. You can recite passages from the Cahiers de Dolérance. From the French Revolution. You can tell us how the Ancien Regime fell apart. What are some of the causes of the French Revolution? And yada, yada, yada. See, there's a mistake out there in which if you can recite all these facts, if you, if you know all these facts all together, then you are king. Then you can go off onto your merry way. But have we actually asked ourselves this, this crucial question? What is literature for? What is literature for? Now, you would have noticed by then, if you sit down and ask yourself the question, yes, you can read very fast, very vast volumes. You can watch videos on all these topics and know a bunch about it. I mean, I have a friend, he's uh, he's really into Marxism, and he's read widely. But he said to me, I've never actually read in depth, that in depth into any other books. But yet, all these ideas are still in my head. But there's a deeper point here in which I covered before in Should You Read Difficult Books, the episode on Should You Read Difficult Books, in which is that the idea that you found on the internet through a very effective medium, through a YouTube video, through a blog post, through a summary, Spark Notes, Cliff Notes, through all these services, what you're getting is just a flat camera picture. What you're getting is just a flat snapshot snapshot of the entire thing well i can tell you right now that great expectations is about pip falling in love with a girl at the same time falling for the ambitions of other people and becoming and becoming a puppet of other people's ambitions i can sum it up for you right there and you can quote me you can quote the facts you can quote dickens but never will you ever get that full psychological revelation Never would you ever derive the true joy out of reading books if you just go for these broad point summaries. If you just aim for reading 100 books per year. If you just aim for reading as fast as you can. Now, when you when you take a look at me and when you take a look at some of the books I recommend, wow, two weeks passed, he's read three books already. I read all these books... There, there's a little secret that I forgot to disclose, which is that I, I am an extremely slow reader. Now, people notice for me by now that I read really damn slowly. I've tried speed reading before in the past, but it didn't really work well for me. So I've developed this very sort of slow and steady pace for all of my readings. And one of my favorite things to do, to do is to grab a dictionary and go to the, go to the bookstore and sit down and just to, just to enjoy a very difficult book. Sometimes an hour would pass 
Bailey got through three pages, but those three pages are some of the most delicious pages that I'm ever going to taste. Well, still, if you're a slow reader, how do you read so many books? I mean, you're recommending all these books to us. I do it on a daily basis. That's the entire secret, really. I read on a daily basis, and there's really nothing more to that. On a daily basis, I would always clock in one to two hours, always clock in those pages, two chapters of Dickens, or maybe a few pages of Joyce. It's just like a after-dinner dessert. Once it becomes a habit, once it becomes a part of me, I don't even have, I don't even have to think about it. And every morning, I just grab a book, and I just uh, read a few lines and put it away. And then before bed, uh, a few hours before bed, I just snuggle in bed and then pick up a book w- with my dictionary and then just read about 10 to 15 pages and put and, and put it away. See, it's all about routines. And most people talk about, I don't have time, I don't have time. Well, it's all about routines. I read on average for, uh, for busy days, on average about 30 minutes, uh, but on non-busy days, about one to two hours, and it would vary throughout uh, th- throughout the period. But it's all about setting that block of time where you know that you should be reading, where you set aside this time that you 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 say to yourself, "Well, this is my time to slow down and read. This is my time to devote myself to reading." Should I ever tell you that reading is not supposed to be enjoyable up front? Especially the type of books, if you really want to derive true enjoyment out of these older texts, true enjoyment enjoyment out of Dickens or Thoreau or out of Shelley. Do you choose to derive deeper pleasure from reading these books? You have to slow down. You have to slow down. And the power of having a routine is that you remove all the excuses and resistance. Once you get into the groove of it, you start to discover that it's actually really enjoyable. Once you actually get into the groove of it, you start to begin to realize, what the hell have I been doing before? I should have been doing this all day long. But then then again, you get tired, you you fall asleep, and then you you repeat the entire thing tomorrow. Resistance is just a part of reading, because uh, instant gratification. Most of us were so accustomed to all these information coming at us that we really set set a time to really slow down and appreciate a book. And that's... That's something that I really, really appreciate. It's just that clean moment in the day where all troubles goes out of the window, where I can just sit there and just appreciate a couple chapters of Dickens, appreciate perhaps a few pages of Joyce, a few pages of an essay from Emerson. All these great things don't buy into the vision of, hey, I've read so many books, look at the shelf behind me. I... I, you know, I've devoured so many volumes in so few time. Well, if you stretch out your time, if you be patient enough as to have a longer time horizon, just read a few chapters per day. What you're going to find out is that you're going to be reading so much more. You're going to be deriving so much more pleasure. And then reading wouldn't seem like a far-fetched thing out there for certain people. Well, you, you too have became a reader. You too have became a great connoisseur of classical literature. And you too, perhaps, when conversing with your friends next time, would would actually withhold information. Because, well, if you truly understand a piece of literature, that feeling, that cannot be put into words. Anything that can be put into words, it's, um, it's, it's not the true satisfaction that you've gained from reading. The greatest pieces of literature, if someone recommends you a book... Uh, for example, the, the bookstore lady recommended Great Expectations for me. Well, you can see that she struggles to put into words in terms of how much the book meant for her. And that's the true power of literature. It really is a form of self-therapy. And I want the same for you. So patience is the key. And also having a broader time horizon, instead of trying to rush it off to finish it in one week, stretch it out into four months. For example, a very, very difficult book such as Ulysses. If you would read it, well, if you try to read it in two months, well, if that doesn't work, stretch it out into four months. What's wrong with reading only three pages of an extremely dense book per day? But you need to get, if you want to get the flavor, be patient and make it a mandatory daily practice. And over time, 
your bookshelf, the books on your bookshelf are going to get uh, more books are, are going to be stacked within your bookshelf as you're going to start to develop a very deep sense of appreciation for all these books. Now, that is all for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Shall see you in the next one.